This is the Amico Mini HD receiver. It's very small. You can see the size of it in my hand. And the ports it has, it's just got one. It doesn't have a, a loop out, which is kind of a disappointment. And we're going to hook that up to this big ugly, the bud, the big ugly satellite dish. It has an AV out, which is a good feature, which the Amico Android, uh, the A3 Amico does not have. It has an RS2322 uh, pin. It has an IR in, which is really cool because if uh, you have this um, packed away somewhere, you can just have an IR sensor stick to your back of your TV. And it has the HDMI output, Ethernet, and a USB port. And it also has a USB port at the side so you can plug a PVR into it. Uh, an external PVR, that is. An external hard drive. The remote, it's a big remote compared to the receiver. <laughs> Remote's longer than the receiver, that's for sure. And has all the neat but buttons and features with that. Overall, I would say that this box is uh, a very solid receiver. Uh, it doesn't have a few of the bells and whistles for uh, connecting it online, but for just using it as a satellite receiver and a PVR if, and for HD, it's got a lot of good features, a, a solid receiver. One thing I miss that it doesn't have is a loop out, so I can hook it up to a uh, daisy chain it, hook it up to uh, other receivers. And at the bottom here of the receiver, you see where you put the slot for people in the UK and in Europe. But in North America, that's pretty much useless. There's not really any subscription service that we can plug into these things. So the accessories it comes with, it comes with the computer connection jack, which I've never used. I just updated, you can just update it via USB. There is a little IR sensor that you can stick to the back of your TV. The stickiness is gone on this thing, so it's fallen off. I just use tape to stick it on, and it just has what looks like a headphone, a jet, a headphone jack that plugs in. It's great if you put your receiver hidden back, and you can usually find these uh, in electronic stores. And it has your common uh, RCA video audio output that just plugs into the back using this little pin here and this is the box as it says it has says it does YouTube which it doesn't do anymore a lot of these boxes don't anymore it does full 1080i the picture on this is usually is pretty good and it has the media player <laughs> I don't know why it has that on it because it doesn't have Wi-Fi maybe you, you can plug a Wi-Fi device to it but it doesn't have Wi-Fi This is an IR, it does have an IR remote, so that's something you need to have. So I'm just gonna do a signal blind scan of 97 West, and we're just gonna see how long it takes to do a blind scan. So the blind scan on this and as I said, it's coming off my little, little tiny, uh, it's a little bit too small for a KU band dish, but it does work. So I'm just going to go through all the transponders and it's going to show all the, highlight all the new channels. It actually pulled in that transponder, which is a good thing. And that's, with 97 West, I find sometimes you just need to do that. You need to wipe out your whole channel list and rescan every, at least ever every half year, because there's a lot of services on 97 West that will go away and come back. And sometimes um, if people don't report on Linksat that the channel's gone away, it just stays up there. So um, also, if you find the channel's been gone, just shoot Linksat an email, and especially if it's a channel that you have used, but just let the rest of us know. This is the this receiver I do like to use for my blind scanning. I just find it's a solid receiver and it does a really good job. 
with uh, blind scanning and finding stuff that maybe other receivers have. For such a tiny little receiver that fits in the palm of my hand, it does a really good job at finding weak signals on the satellite that some receivers can't get, but that re this receiver does a really good job at it. Saving data, it found 184 channels, which is not a surprise. There's probably a few more channels, but they're just on weaker transponders that I can't get with that small dish that I'm using. And I wasn't able to find NASA today on there. So I had NASA on an er earlier video on Galaxy 19, but I don't know if it's there anymore. These are all, actually, this is all satellites. I want to go to Red Group Satellite. As I scan the skies, a lot of satellites I've gotten over the years that I've scanned in, but mainly I stick to those that are around 97 West. There we go. We got. And on the box, when it's lit up, there is a power feature, and if it is on a transponder where you can receive a signal, a light up will light up for that. And then if the transponder is there's nothing on it, or you lose signal, the light will go away to indicate that there's nothing there. The Amico receiver does have DVB-S2, 8PSK, and QPSK capabilities. So this is the screen display. It indicates that it is at 70% of the transponder. If you hit the red button, you can see all your transponder information. And usually I don't get anything above 70%. And if I go into the menu, just show the interface some more and some of its features preferences that you can set up which is very similar to many other satellite receivers it doesn't have um, a PVR plugged into it but you can and PVR works pretty good on this plays a lot all the media codec files so the media player works good on this so it has its network HTTP upgrade FTP weather forecast net media which says it has YouTube but it doesn't work as in many of these devices and it has web TV so that's the interface, very bare bones, it doesn't stream, but for just FTA, it is a great receiver.